What does mixing a cocktail have in common with our lives? Find out today from the breakthrough mixologist himself. All right, Coach Head, are you ready? Let's go! Hey everybody, Ryan Roten here, and this is the Brand New You Podcast, where we explore how to use personal branding and social media to impact your career. No need to look any further, you found the podcast dedicated to helping you create a brand new you. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the Brand New You Show. I'm Ryan, your host, and today we welcome to the show Gary Ware, the proprietor at Breakthrough Cocktail. At Breakthrough Cocktail, Gary and his team help young professionals groom their quality of life by offering insanely practical advice in the areas of happiness, professional development, productivity, and even personal finance. Through their unique, one-of-a-kind coaching programs, Breakthrough Cocktail helps its clients find passion, excel at a job they'll love, and live an epic life. By day, Gary is a digital marketer, and by night, he is a self-proclaimed improv goofball. So without any further ado, here is the one and the only Breakthrough Mixologist. Gary, welcome to the show. Hey, Ryan. I'm so happy to be here. Well, this is pretty exciting for me too, Gary. You and I have known each other now for actually probably going on two years since we attended the very first ever held One Day Business Breakthrough. And it's been really fun for me keeping track and keeping an eye on what you've been doing over the last couple of years. Yeah. And same with me. It's so cool. Just that one event has been the catalyst for so many of us. Yeah, I know. And I'll tell you, when I left, there wasn't for me a business wise, I don't think there was a breakthrough at that moment. But the breakthrough that I had that day was really more of a mindset and really more of a, you know, everybody else is kind of in the same boat that I am. It's not just me. And so having people like yourself around that you can call on and talk to has been a tremendous help in keeping my motivation and keeping me going with what we're doing with the podcast and everything else. Have you had the same kind of experience? Yeah, I totally agree because we're sitting sitting in our office and it's late or it's really early and we're trying to power through. There's nothing like having that camaraderie, that face-to-face interaction and meeting people. And I agree. We all were on different levels. Some were further ahead, some were further behind, some were right in the middle. But having people in all areas, it really pulls you in some cases because you see people and you say, look, I'm on that same trajectory. You know, that's what I have to look forward to. And then some areas, it's more validating. It's like, all right, I'm not alone. And then it feels good to help the other people that where you were maybe two or three months ago. Right, right. Yeah, not to turn this into like a complete advertisement for the One Day Business Breakthrough, but for those who are listening, if you're curious, if you go to OneDayBusinessBreakthrough.com, you can find out all the information about the sessions and events and the things that Gary and I are talking about. And I don't know about you, Gary, but I would definitely highly recommend if anybody is ever interested in attending that event to do so. Yeah, agreed. And don't get in your head and think, oh, I need to be further along in my business or my little side hustle. Just the fact of being there and making that commitment is all that you need. Yep. No, I agree 100 percent. Let's start into the brand new you show now. We'll transition away from one day business (laughs) breakthrough and get to the (laughs) new podcast. So I have one question that I ask all of my guests right at the very start of every interview that I do, Gary. And my question for you is, if you could vacation in only one place for the rest of your vacation days, where would you go? Vacation in one place. Man, of all the world. I have to say the place that I've been to recently was Hawaii. It's very simple, but Again, vacations bring back memories and memories just have this effect on us. And one of the best vacations that I had was my honeymoon. And it was on the big island and we spent seven days there and talk about paradise. The big island has a mix of the rural Hawaii where there's in some cases they were just like goats and stuff on the side of the road. And then you have some of the city, but it's not too busy like a Honolulu and it's not too tropical like an Oahu. And we had so much fun there because we were able to unplug, we we're able to explore and do some stuff and there was the beach. So that's my answer. Nice. You are the first to say Hawaii, by the way. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> cool. So now when you're going on your vacation to Hawaii, I know you read a lot of books. What book are you either currently reading that you would take with you or what's one book that you want to read that you would take with you? Oh, wow. Okay. 
Yes. And it's actually perfect timing because I'm reading this book called Way of the Peace of Warrior. And that book is so weird, but I don't know. It's hard to describe. And basically everyone that I've talked to, so it was recommended to me. It was saying, hey, Gary, this is something that you should read. It's something that will really help you get centered and grounded and focus on priorities in life and on this personal development and reading and working on myself. So I took that recommendation to heart and I started reading it maybe just a few days ago. It's still fresh, barely breaking through the story. But that is a story that I think no matter where you are in your life and no matter what you're working on, you will find something in there that will inspire you. It will just help you get to the next level. And for me, right out of the gate, there was just some areas where I'm like, whoa. And so just for the listeners who are like Way of the Peaceful Warrior, it's based on a true story and it's based in the 60s. This gentleman, he went to Berkeley on a gymnastics scholarship and he's an athlete. He's in his prime and he meets this old man at a gas station. And this old man, I tell people, it's like Karate Kid where you find your mentor. Your mentor is like someone that you wouldn't even think would be your mentor, but he really takes him under his wing. And it's sort of new age, like sort of a style of thinking. But once you get past that, and the author said in the forward that he did embellish a little bit just for the story's sake and to give a little bit of entertainment value. But this is based on his own adventures and how he was at school and in college. He was doing all the right things, but he felt unfulfilled. And this just turned his world upside down. But he got more fulfillment out of that than this, the structure of school. I would say that just that message alone right there might resonate with a lot of people who are going to listen to this podcast, that feeling of you're doing what you think you're supposed to be doing, but you're not feeling fulfilled. And so where do you go? What do you do? Where do you go next? Yeah, exactly. So I highly recommend if you do choose to read this book, don't get caught up in the specifics of, wow, how they do that and this, that and the other. Just read it and be present and focused on it and listen for the message because there's a lot of little mini messages here and there that will get you to second guess what you're doing and really change your direction. All right. I'll make sure that I link up to that in the show notes so that everybody can go pick up a copy of that and check it out if that's what they want to do. Perfect. So now normally I would do a section now, Gary, called pick one and tell me why. But in honor of your show today, I'm going to modify it and I'm going to call it, would you rather? Oh, I love it. <laughs> so my first question for you is, would you rather be shopping or road tripping? Road tripping, hands down. <laughs> All right. Any particular place you'd go when you're road tripping? Yeah, I actually am inspired. I was camping for my birthday a few weeks ago, and there was a family there that they started in British Columbia, and they made this I guess, camper RV out of an old fire truck. It was refabricated and configured and it was painted the seafoam green. And the only reason we know that there was this web address on their windshield. And like for the first day or so, we were so curious, like, what is this? And then we looked it up. Turns out it's a family that's been traveling for two years, mom, a dad, and two daughters. And they started in Canada and they've been traveling the U.S., staying at campgrounds and stuff like that. And they're going to go down into South America. And that was very fascinating. And I went on their website and I saw all of their little stops and they would pick some way out of the blue places and some pretty popular places. And I thought that would be so cool to do that as a way their daughters are pretty young it, from the looks of things. I think their daughters are one might be three and one might be five, but they are just traveling the U.S. And I think that would be awesome. That sounds like it'd be a lot of fun. That would be very enjoyable just to go see all the different places that are in the United States because everybody likes to go outside of the United States to visit. But there's a lot of cool stuff just here within our quote unquote four walls, if you will. Yeah, exactly. Without any specific agenda or time frame. Yeah, you have to have some structure, but just I feel like when you're on vacation and you go and stop somewhere or even going on a road trip, the time frame is so condensed and you spend most of the time driving and you get to a place and you barely get a chance to enjoy it. So just to be on, as the Australians say, like a walkabout and just be free flowing, that would just be awesome. Speaking of free flowing, would you rather be farming or improvising? Farming or improvising? You know what? I have to say farming because, and this is me getting all sort of new age again, life is improvising. And though I enjoy the being on the stage and doing that, 
farming, I don't know. I think I'm getting into a sort of area in my life, a season in my life where I like the sort of chillness of it. And again, life is improvised. And that would be so cool to just be a farmer and have a ranch and just have my thing going on there and my family and we're just living off the land again you know call me sort of like a new age or anything like that but it would be interesting to be a little bit more simplistic okay so last one would you rather participate in a warrior dash or run a half marathon wow ryan man you've done your homework and you forget the crazy questions <laughs> All right. That is a tough one. Being that I just finished a warrior dash and that was very challenging. I'll say half marathon because there's less obstacles and it's a straight shot for the most part. So I've never done either actually, nor do I imagine myself doing either anytime soon, but talk to me a little bit about your warrior dash experience. If you were to kind of sum up, what's one thing that that taught you as you were running it or going through it, what would that be? Actually, it's so funny that you asked this. For those of you who are listening, this is not even a setup. We didn't even plan this. I was thinking as I was finishing the Warrior Dash, I was thinking, what did I learn from that? And it wasn't one thing that I learned. I learned three things, if you don't mind me sharing the three things. And for those of you who don't know what a Warrior Dash, some people might call it a Spartan race. Some people might just call it a mud run. Basically, it's a 5K, 3.3 miles, and sprinkled throughout the course is a bunch of obstacles. And in fact, there were 16 obstacles and they were challenging in different degrees. And so through that, it was very challenging on a lot of different areas of your body, but mostly in the mental space. One of my challenges or goals this year is to run a half marathon. And as a way to prepare for that, I said, all right, you know what? Let me run a 5K and not just any 5K. Let me just run a very challenging 5K because I feel if I can push myself out of my comfort zone, I can get to the mental capacity of running a half marathon. So getting back to my point, I trained for this for about a month and a half. So every day I would run. I used this app called RunKeeper and it had a program, the Couch to 5K. And prior to this, I had not run this much in years. And I haven't done this much sort of strenuous activity in years as well. So I trained for it just so I'm prepared. So as I'm running, I'm running with a good friend of mine. This guy is young. He's fit. He's agile. He's got the washboard stomach. In fact, he ran without a shirt. I'm like, damn. But then afterwards, I realized maybe I should have done the same thing because it does weigh down. Nonetheless, I love the challenge. So the first thing that I learned is it's all about surrounding yourself with people that are smarter than you. Reason being, as the saying goes, you are the average of the five people that you surround yourself with. And my friend Penn, he pushed me and I don't even think he knew that. So Penn, if you're listening, thank you. And you didn't just push me, you pulled me because he was in that much more shape. I was like, you know what? I got to keep up with him. We're going at this together. I can't stop. He isn't stopping. So that kept me going. The second lesson that I've learned is that your inner world creates your outer world. You know, this is one of these phrases that I think I first heard it in the millionaire mind. I think that's where I read it. But as I was running, you get into your head and then you think, oh, my God, are we done yet? Or what's coming ahead? And I really realized that when I kept a clear mind and I really pushed myself because, yes, there's going to be people that are on the course that give me high fives and stuff like that. But that's all for not if in your head you're thinking, oh my God, I can't do this. I can't do this. And I even tried this out. Like when I really pushed myself and I said, you can do this, Gary. Like it wasn't easy, but I was able to muster the courage and, and the strength to get over some of these obstacles. And some of these are hard. We had to do this thing where it's a slack line. So this like, it's almost like a tight rope, but it's a little bit wider. And there's a net rope on top of us and underneath us is water. And we have to pull ourselves across this like one foot at a time. And again, it's not easy, but by having Penn pulling me and really focusing on my mindset, I was able to get through. And the last thing is just the whole meditation aspect of it. Whether you are one that believes in meditation or not, but by being present in the moment and having moments where I would look back and say, wow, I did this, it kept me going. It sounds like you had a lot of personal breakthrough moments as you were running the Warrior Dash. 
Yes, yes. And I highly recommend that if you are in an area where you feel stuck, where you feel like, oh my gosh, every day, you know, you just have the normal grind to do something like that. You know, maybe it's not the warrior dash, you know, maybe it's something else, but I highly recommend do something that's going to push you way out of your comfort zone. And actually, if you're scared about doing a warrior dash or something like that, I highly suggest that you do that. Something that is going to scare you and push you because to do it, you need to train for it. It's not something where you just wake up and do it. Granted, yes, you could do that. But if you want the best possible success, you're going to train for it. So it's going to keep you disciplined. And when you complete it, your comfort zone is going to be pushed way out. And I feel that by doing that, it stretches your comfort zone. And just like something that you stretch like a rubber band, it's not going to be as tight. It's not going to be as small. So it's just a way to expand your comfort zone. Awesome. That's some great wisdom and advice being passed along, just like what you guys do over at Breakthrough Cocktail. And so I've got a few questions I want to run by you now in regards to Breakthrough Cocktail. But the very first one that I need to know an answer to is what is the drink that you're holding on the first page of your website? Yeah, so that is a cosmopolitan. Yes, call it a girly drink, if you will. And the reason for that is not because I like cosmopolitans. It was more for color. The photographer said, personally, I'm you know bourbon drinker. I'm really simple. I like old fashions. I like just some scotch, either neat or on the rocks with cherries. I'm very specific in that regard. But that doesn't photograph well. And so the photographer said, let's get something else. And so... I have nothing against Cosmopolitan. In fact, (laughs) it is a good drink because if you're not familiar with a Cosmopolitan, it's vodka. It's one and a half ounces of vodka. It is half an ounce of triple sec and one ounce of cranberry. You shake it up in a mixer and you strain it into a martini glass and boom. So cranberry is really good for your insides and your sort of keeping everything nice and fresh. And vodka is not that bad for you. It's made from potatoes and stuff like that. Granted, I've heard some people, they get a little bit amped up when they're on vodka, but it's not necessarily my drink of choice. But yeah, so to answer your question, it is a Cosmo. And the reason we had it was for photography purposes. I would never have guessed that. I was simply curious. But now that you've explained it, it's like, wow. So the mark of a good photographer is one that knows the drinks that will show up best when you're taking pictures. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. If you were to have just a plain brown drink, it's not going to show up. All right. Hey, so in your words, as we're talking about your site and your business, Breakthrough Cocktail, can you explain to the listeners what is Breakthrough Cocktail? All right. So Breakthrough Cocktail. So I was thinking... When I decided that I wanted to put this together, I was working with a coach and one of my mentors, Jamie Tardy from eventualmillionaire.com. And we were thinking about what's next for me. Because when we met Ryan, I was focusing just on personal finance. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I can help people in the area of personal finance because I overcame a lot of debt and working with younger professionals, that's an area that is really hard. And I just, again, wasn't getting fulfilled from it. And so we went through a whole process of trying to identify what's my what. I had a guest on my show recently, and we were talking about that. His name is Stephen Ulcer, and he talks about like finding your what. And one of the things, so we went through a list of all the things that I'm passionate about, all the things that I love doing. And at the end of the day, it boiled down to helping people, helping people find that breakthrough moment. And so we were trying to figure out like, what is this brand going to be called? And we were just putting together, you know, I have this process that I do in marketing and I do with some of my mentees and my students. It's called, and it's not as provocative as it sounds. It's called idea sex. Is that all right? If I say that, Ryan, I just, yeah, absolutely. It's fine. And I stole that from the book, Choose Yourself from James Altucher. And idea sex is the process of essentially meshing two things together. And so we were meshing things together, trying to figure out what I like to do. And at the end of the day, I like helping people get that breakthrough moment. And I used to be a bartender. And as a bartender, when you get people that come to the bar, they have their specific drink. They have a drink of choice, a drink that makes them happy, a drink that helps them unwind. And, you know, very few people have similar tastes in drinks. Yes, you may find a lot of scotch drinkers and stuff like that, but everyone has their drink of choice. And just like a personal breakthrough, a recipe for fulfillment or a recipe for happiness, it varies from person to person. And just like a good drink, it requires different amounts of alcohol. And when you apply them, you get something that is better than each of the ingredients 
by themselves. And so that's how Breakthrough Cocktail was formed. And that's why I like to call myself a success mixologist, because I like to help people find what is going to be that personal breakthrough for them. Right. And if we use breakthrough cocktail as kind of a metaphor for our life and where you need to mix different drinks in order to come up with the right, shall we say, taste or flavor that you're looking for. You mentioned on your site that there are certain skills that are required to be an adult that are never taught. Do you have some examples of what those skills might be? Yeah. And it's so interesting that as I'm continue growing. I'm all about those everlong learners, whatever you want to call them. I'm learning even more. And so when we go to college, we are told that we need to study hard. We need to get a job and we need to go off and work somewhere for 20 years and then we can retire. Well, that was the old recipe. That was the old game. And unfortunately, colleges, they teach you just that. They teach you these skills, but they don't teach you soft skills. They don't teach you about collaboration. They don't teach you about how to sell yourself. They just teach you the practical knowledge of doing that job of whatever your major is. And you may have heard the term book smart. And that's essentially if you just go through college, just learning the lessons that the teachers give you, you'll end up being book smart, but you're not in, you know, what someone else would say, street smart. You haven't had that experience. And so some of the things that I teach people is just like the premise of your show, the brand new you is, well, how do you present yourself? How do you stand out? Because one of the things that I've learned being in the corporate world for quite some time is when we get people that are fresh out of school and they're applying for jobs and they haven't really worked in the corporate environment, they do what is required of them. Their resumes are so plain vanilla. They come in and they answer the questions. They practice those questions, but they have no personality. And so those are some of the things that I help people do is find that personality and Going back to Way of the Peaceful Warrior, one of the things as I'm reading this story, the mentor, if you will, he works at this gas station and the main guy's name is Dan. He's filling up a gas tank and he said, you are like this gas tank. Your brain is like this gas tank. It's full of just knowledge and facts. And he actually overfills the car. And he said, in fact, you're overfilling with knowledge, but you haven't realized that knowledge. And when you just have knowledge, it's very one dimensional. Mm. But once you realize it and realizing it is a three dimensional process of doing it. So it requires your mind, your body and your spirit of just actually doing it. You really don't know what it's like. And you find so many people, they just rattle off facts and stuff like that. But they've not even experienced any of that. Right. And so that's what I help my students do is get that experience because a good analogy is like when you're a kid and you're a passenger in a car, you know the concepts of driving. You know what it's like. But until you actually sit in the driver's seat and actually drive the car, you haven't realized it. Right. And I think one of the reasons why people don't take the action to be able to experience whatever it is that they may want to experience, but they don't is because they're afraid that they're going to fail. They're afraid to actually stand out, put themselves out there, and then they fail and they're concerned about what people may or may not think about them. And so what, what do you believe, what role do you believe failure actually plays in one's personal or professional development? It is huge. And in fact, it's unfortunate that society has put this term, you know, failure as a bad thing. And I'm the person that if a definition doesn't suit you, you need to change the definition. And so people get stuck on the word failure and it produces this block where they like, ah, I need to be perfect. I can't fail. But what people don't realize is failure is good. And in fact, we learn in some cases more from failures than from success because I think it was Thomas Edison once said, I didn't fail. I just found thousands of ways that didn't work. Mm -hmm. And again, a lot of it is just our society. A lot of it's just corporate America, where there's so much pressure to be successful that we fail to realize. And we look at all these people and we idolize them. You're like, wow, someone like a Steve Jobs or in the sports world, like a Kobe or anything like that. But we see a snapshot. We see their current snapshot. We don't see that trail that led to where they are and all the failures along the way. Right. And while we're on the topic of failure, what role can improv help to play helping people overcome their fears of failing? Oh my gosh. 
We're like so in sync. It was almost like I teed you up at the UT me up. We were playing a game of volleyball here and we're going back and forth. So improv is huge in that regard. So for improv, I do improv comedy and it's more like theater than stand up. A lot of people know improv from the show. Whose line is it anyway? But with improv, we learn a set of maxims that allow us to play games with each other on stage. And we are essentially like someone walking a tightrope without a net. Everything that we do is made up. And part of that, I tell people, the cool thing about improv is you learn how to fail. And because I perform weekly at a theater and we get some good nights and we get some bad nights. And we have some things that we're trying to do that lands well and some things that don't land well. But by failing, and I don't mean just go out and fail. Like when I tell my students, you should fail more. I don't mean just go out and say, I'm just going to fail. No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I mean, go out and play big, but realize that it's okay. And so by doing improv, when I have a bad day, I don't just shun it and hide those feelings. You know, I realize those feelings. I'm like, all right, you know what? It didn't work exactly as we had hoped, but guess what? I'm alive. People didn't throw tomatoes. People didn't boo us off stage. Right. And you get better. And even if they did, it's not the worst thing that could ever happen either, right? As long as you take away something that you can learn from that and apply the next time you put yourself out there, you're better off for having tried. Yep, exactly. And so, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. And now I have a friend of mine, his name's Matthew Capala. I actually interviewed him in episode 10 of the show. He has a saying that I've really latched onto. And the more I say it, the more it just really gets ingrained in the back of my mind, which is invisibility is a worse fate than failure. And what he means by that is it's better to put yourself out there and try things and not be successful at them than it is to sit back and be invisible and not try anything at all. Because every time you put yourself out there, even if you fail, you're going to improve some way personally or professionally. Would you agree with that? I totally agree with that. And on a deeper level of that is what a lot of people don't realize. The reason why we have a hard time doing things is because our brains, they remember all these past experiences. I tell people your inner voice is like your best friend that you've known since you were a kid. And then they only know the experiences that happened in the past. They don't know anything about the future. And say one day you're like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I live in Michigan and it's cold and and your inner self is your best friend. And they say, I'm going to move to San Diego because it's warmer. Well, your inner self, your best friend is going to keep you from doing it because they remember all the past times. And so if you don't try They're going to remember like, oh, yeah, you didn't try. You're not good enough. And then you're probably not going to have really good self-talk and you're going to keep talking yourself out of it because your inner self is going to keep remembering and bringing back all the times that you said you were going to do something, but you didn't. So essentially you're lying to yourself and what you don't know, the game that you're playing is that you're keeping yourself small because you keep not doing it. Biggest fears, I think, if I remember correctly, it's like the biggest fear, even more feared, if you will, than death, is the fear of public speaking. Everybody's heard of Toastmasters, but can improv help people overcome a fear of public speaking as well? It can. And actually, to know subconsciously why that is, why we have this fear of public speaking, is because back in the day when people were going to be sentenced to death and when bad things happened, you were put in front of a large crowd and you essentially had to prove yourself. And so subconsciously, that's been ingrained. And so being put in front of large crowds is like a fear sometimes worse than death. And so You're absolutely right. Toastmasters is a great way to help you overcome that because they teach you some fundamental principles that help you consider it like a tool set that helps you be better at public speaking. And I tried Toastmasters and Toastmasters work for some people. It definitely gets them because if you think about fear, we're scared because of a few reasons. And one of them is we're not prepared. Think about a time when you had to get up and give a presentation and you didn't properly prepare for it and you probably had a bad bad outcome or something like that. And so one of the reasons why we're feared is we don't think we're ready. We don't think we're good enough. So Toastmasters gives you some skills that helps you deal with those situations. So since if you're better prepared, it's going to be easier for you. Now, the problem I had with it was it was too structured. And then, so moving on to improv, improv, it helps as well. And I think it helps in a different sense. It gives you some structure, but what it does, it helps you realize that we're all the same. And if you can adapt the wisdom of improv, 
then you realize that, hey, I can be myself. I can be my quirky self. And we play all these games. We play these silly games. And you're like, what does this have to do? But they all have like little lessons, little hidden meanings to them. And by doing improv, you learn a lot more than just a few little techniques that is going to help you give a speech better or help you lead a cocktail party better. You learn how to just be yourself, be present, be in the moment, collaborate, and then you can think on your feet. And so when you're in these high pressure environments, you're going to probably still be nervous. In fact, I still get nervous to this day when I give big talks, but you learn how to be agile, how to think on your feet, how to not just be stuck in one situation. So if you just follow this checklist, if you will, of things that you do, if something goes adjacent from that, then you're stuck and then you're going to start to backpedal. Well, improv, Instead of a checklist of things that you have to do, it's more like a playlist. It's more like suggestions that you have in your tool belt so that you can deal with a whole bunch of different suggestions in scenarios. So like a quarterback on a football team, it allows you to call an audible based on what you see happening or taking place around you. Exactly. So, Gary, I know that you're putting yourself out there yet again, and you're working on a pretty cool project right now that's called Breakthrough Cocktail, the Virtual Summit. And in, mm -hmm. in full disclosure to everyone listening, I've been interviewed to be a part of it. Thank you very much for that. I'm honored that you included me. Yes. Can you tell all the listeners on the brand new you show, what is the Breakthrough Cocktail Virtual Summit? Yes. So again, going back to the whole idea that fulfillment in life, there's different things that is going to help you get that fulfillment. I realize that we need these tools to help us get there. And I wanted to interview a whole bunch of people that I admire in so many different areas and just provide guidance. And it's going to be completely free. So what the virtual summit is, these are all pre-recorded interviews and presentations from leading speakers and authors and inspirational people. And Ryan is one of them. And they're on a whole bunch of different topics. And it's going to go live the last week of April, which I believe that Monday is the 27th. And every day, there's going to be a batch of interviews that are going to be on a different theme. And all of those interviews are going to be live for 48 hours. It's free to sign up. And then, then they'll go down and then we'll have another topic. And then at the end of the five days, it'll go away. And the whole point of that is I feel like if you can better yourself, then everything else just gets easier and gets better. And so that is the main reason behind that. I really feel like that in order to have enjoyment in life and a fulfilled life, you need to work on yourself. So I'm just providing a whole bunch of things that you can pull from depending on what season in life you are. A lot of people may gravitate towards the career side or they might gravitate towards the goal setting side of things. So there's something for everyone, no matter where you are, what you're working on, there's something for everyone. But this is the big thing with this. You can't just watch something once and then just lock it in. It takes practice. It takes watching something over and over again. And so for the people that really take themselves seriously, they will probably want to consider getting the all access pass. And what that is for $97, you will get access to all the videos and the audio versions and a whole bunch of bonuses from that. And you'll get to keep it forever. But that money is not going in my pocket. In fact, all the proceeds from that is going towards a Pencils of Promise campaign that I'm running to build a school in Guatemala. Which is awesome. Yeah. And our goal is to raise $25,000, which I know we're going to do. I'm very confident we're going to do that. And so think of it like this. You're investing in your personal development and you're also investing in the personal development of someone else. That's awesome. And for as long as I've known you, Gary, that is something that like speaks to who you are. You are all about helping other people. And I think your breakthrough cocktail virtual summit is going to go a long way, not just to helping the people who do purchase it and pay attention and implement what they learn in the videos, but ultimately you're going to help teach children in another country. And that's just super cool. Yeah. Another book that I recently read is called Flow, and it's by an author by the name of Miha Chesset Mihai. I think I pronounced it correct. And they're talking about what's our purpose in life. And one of the things that came from that, it's to really push evolution and really help other people find enjoyment and find fulfillment in life. And that is one of my personal goals as well, is to not just be thinking about myself, but be thinking outward. Because I feel that if 
when you're thinking internally of yourself, that's when all the negative thoughts happen. That's when self doubts and those limiting beliefs pop up. But when you are thinking outward, you're thinking for someone else, thinking about someone else's well being. For a moment, you don't think about yourself and you're able to just have peace. Mm-hmm. And so that's, again, one of the reasons why I want to focus on that. It's self-serving in that I'm not stuck in my head because I'm helping other people. So, again, I set some very audacious goals this year. I got that from Tony Robbins, and it really does push me to get to the next level. And one of the things that I said I wanted to do this year was to do a virtual summit and to build a school. And so this is killing two birds with one stone. So, Gary, I know helping other people is at the core of who you are. So for the listeners today who might want to get in touch with you, follow up with any of your coaching programs or products, what is the best way for them to get in touch with you? Yeah, First off, BreakthroughCocktail.com is the hub for everything. They'll have links to the podcast. They'll have links to the virtual summit. I'm on Twitter at Gary Ware. I'm on Instagram. Instagram is Breakthrough Cocktail. Our own Twitter is BT Cocktail, just because the limitation of characters there. And yeah, that's where you can find me. I'm on LinkedIn. You can look me up, Gary Ware on LinkedIn. I believe it's Gary.Ware or Gary Ware. Either way, you'll find me. And if you're interested in the summit, the URL for the summit, so by the time that this airs, everything should be up. But it is elixiroflifesummit.com. And as I said, there's going to be a lot of really cool people. We have uh, author Jeff Goins. We have Ryan. We have Jarek Robbins. He is a big guy. He has a book coming out. His dad is in the space. I can't really mention his dad, but I'm pretty sure you probably know who his dad is. And we have so many other people that focus on mindset and we have other improvisers on there. Lots of great stories. It's going to be awesome. I highly recommend that you participate because you're going to get something that's going to better yourself. And more importantly, if you invest in it, you're going to better the lives of someone else. Fantastic. So do you have any final thoughts, words of wisdoms or tips that you'd like to pass on to anybody who's listening today? Yeah, I think it's all about just knowing yourself. I highly recommend that everyone make time for themselves because we're always going, we're always connected, but we never have a chance to look inside and really find out what's going on. Our body has a way of telling us stuff. And sometimes we wait till it's too late when we were either hit with an illness or we have burnout. So every day you should spend some time just working on yourself. I read the book Miracle Morning and I follow that morning ritual of doing silence, affirmations, exercise, gratitude, reading, journaling, etc. But that might be a little bit too much for some people. At the minimum, before you go to bed or when you wake up, you know, take a moment and just reflect on the previous day and what are the good things that came from that previous day. I'm pretty sure you can find at least one thing. And what's something that you're going to continue to work on? If you do that, that's a good start. Okay. Fantastic. Hey, Gary, it has been absolutely my pleasure having you on the show today. I greatly appreciate your time and your generosity. Good luck with the virtual summit. And if there's anything I can do to help you out in the future, please don't hesitate to reach out and let me know. Yeah. And it was such an honor to be on the show, Ryan. You know, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, Gary. If your inner world creates your outer world, what is your inner world creating for you? Could your inner voice be holding you back? As Gary says, thinking inward can cause you to stay where you are, to stay complacent. If you feel stuck or like you're caught in the normal grind, maybe it's time to step outside of your comfort zone. Push your boundaries. Stretch your comfort zone. Go do the thing that you fear. Run a 5K. Give a speech. Push publish on your blog post. Push back the negative internal turmoil that exists in all of us. Rather than think inward, which only knows the past, instead try thinking outward and embracing your future. Go and start creating a brand new you. If you're looking for inspiration or motivation to help you along the way, be sure to check out Gary's Breakthrough Cocktail Virtual Summit when it releases in April. If you're trying to create a brand new you, then you know you need to work on yourself. Gary's virtual course is going to cover a wide range of personal development topics, all of which are free during the summit period. After which, the videos all go behind a membership site, which you can get lifetime access to by purchasing the All Access Pass for just $97. Remember, Gary's not making a dime on this course. 
He's donated 100% of the proceeds to Pencils of Promise in order to build a school in Guatemala. And I think that's pretty cool. So not only will you be investing in your own personal development, but you'll also be helping others create a brand new version of themselves as well. Now go out and get started. A brand new you is awaiting. So go push your comfort zone and get after it. And until next time, I've been Ryan, and I'm out. Hey, folks, if you want to leverage your personal brand and become known in your field, you first need to become visible. To find out how visible you are, you need to take my 100% free online branding assessment. So head on over to ryanroden.com, click the orange start button to learn how visible you are today.